Okay, welcome to the OP beginner's build for set. Now this is a build that's beginner friendly, it's pretty easy to make. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot, just follow these. You have some options for, uh, you know, situational options. Um, what I typically do is I'll start here, let me take these off so you see his base stats here. Okay, so, uh, first thing we're gonna get let me take that off. We're going to get Assassin's Blessing because this is a jungle build. There's some variation here to switch to uh, maybe you want to do solo or carry. It's it's going to be a really similar build for those as well. So Assassin's Blessing, that's going to give us you know a little bit of power, a little bit of health, uh, good damage versus jungle monsters, 8% health and 25 mana restored on killing a jungle monster. Uh, everybody knows what that does. It's just a really good starter for junglers. Next, we're going to go into Crusher. Uh, Crusher gives us some physical power, some attack speed, and some penetration. And then the passive is going to be enemies hit by your damaging abilities take an additional 20 physical damage plus 15% of your physical power over 2 seconds. So it puts a little bit of a DOT on them. Uh, it's just a nice item to start out with and... If you're having tanks, the physical penetration is really nice and it complements this uh, set very well. Uh, next, my personal preference is to go into crit. I don't see a lot of builds with that, but we're going to go into malice. That's going to give us 40 physical power, uh, some 25% critical strike chance, and some cooldown reduction. Now, the best part about this is it's passive. Successfully hitting an enemy god with a critical strike will subtract three seconds from all of your abilities currently on cooldown. All except for your ultimate ability. This effect can only happen once every five seconds. But that's that's obviously powerful. You're going to have your abilities up and set is a very ability based god. So that's really nice. But it also synergizes very well with Deathbringer. It's going to give you just as much physical power. Again, it's going to give you another 25% critical chance. So every other strike, you're going to be hitting criticals, uh, at least in theory. And then it's going to boost the damage of the criticals you do by 30%. So now you're dealing 130% damage whenever you're critting half of the time. That's very powerful. Uh, next, we're going to go into Hydra's Lament. 40 physical power, 10 cooldown reduction, and some mana per second. Passive is for 8 seconds after using an ability, your next basic attack will deal an additional 40% damage. Abilities that function like basic attacks don't benefit from this. This item grants 2.5 mana per second eh, per tissing, er, <laughs> per tissing, per 10% of your missing mana. Uh, that's just a little bit of a bonus, but the main importance here is it is very good uh, for starting engagements. Uh, you're going to go in, uh, teleport in, and you're going to use your ability to teleport in, and then for 8 seconds, your first basic attack is going to deal 40% more damage. But, not only that, but if you happen to get a crit, because you have a 50-50 chance of getting a crit, that's going to push you up by a hundred and what is that a hundred and seventy percent so that's uh that's pretty powerful now here's where it gets into well let me go ahead and talk about our other you know necessity in here is arendite uh, a really big chunk of physical power some cooldown reduction that's nice but the passive is really nice as well. When your ultimate ability has finished casting, reveal all enemy gods within 120 units for 8 seconds. While moving towards, revealed enemy gain 30% movement speed. When first striking a revealed target, they take an additional 40, or 40 damage plus 30% of your physical power. This can only occur once every 45 seconds. But that is obviously powerful. Now... Here's where you get into the options. These things are really nice, but it's all damage. So if you're getting nuked, you're going to need to go into uh, some survivabilities. So uh, things that obviously you're going to sell Assassin's Blessing. If you're not dealing with 
a bunch of tanks. I would recommend selling Crusher. That way now you can get, uh, say, Soul Eater and Manola Discord. And now you have Fantastic Survive on top of the amount of damage you're dealing. Uh, if you decide that you don't want to go for Manila Discord, of course you have Sledge for health, or you have Shifter Shield for the uh, plus, you know, the extra damage you get at 100% health, and then the extra protections you get under 75% health. Uh, Talaria Boots, really, that is just up to you. What I typically do is after I get my build all set up and finished, let's say we go into Manila Discord for some survive. I'll get Elixir of Speed for the permanent 18% increase on your movement speed. Now, it's not as much movement speed as Talaria Boots gives you, but, you know, that's just up to you. And honestly, if you are planning on selling all your items, a uh, build that I do often would be Assassin's Blessing into Talaria Boots, into Crusher, into Malice, uh into Deathbringer, and then into Arendite. So, but that's just one of the options, and you can build this in any order you would like. I do recommend that uh, Crusher would be, you know, your second or third option. Of course, you want to start with a starter, naturally. If you don't, then, well, I guess you can just go into Crusher immediately, and skip over Assassin's Blessing, although I don't recommend it. It's just nice to have, and you can sell it afterwards. So, uh, let's say, uh, let's look at what an endgame build might look like. And Soul Eater is fantastic. I use this a lot. So, say you get Soul Eater, you start building up those stacks for the, you know, you get a little bit of physical power out of it, you get some more damage dealt, and at full stacks, you get 20% of the damage that you deal back to you for health. That is fantastic. That is absolutely powerful. Uh, absolutely necessity is these two right here. They have great synergy with each other and it's a lot more damage that you're gonna be dealing consistently. Uh, I typically like to go Erendite because obviously it's a lot more damage and it's uh, you get some nice movement speed. You get a big boom of damage whenever you cast your ultimate. All this and that. It's just fantastic ability. Now, I really am a huge fan of Hydra's Lament because that 40% damage on your basic attack after using an ability hurts really bad, especially if you crit. Now, here's the thing. is I do believe it stacks. I could be wrong here. I do believe that it stacks, though. So with this, you're going to be dealing 100% more damage whenever you do crit. With this, that's going to bump it up to 130%. Now, if you dive in and hit them with an ability and do a basic attack and it crits, that's going to put you up at 170% more damage on your starting basic attack. That is insanity. So... Uh, after that, I do recommend getting some kind of survive. If you feel that Soul Eater is plenty enough and you feel that you don't need Mantle of Discord or Shifter Shield, then, yeah, go ahead and get Crusher just for some flat pen. Uh, or, well, for some penetration. So, but typically, you're probably going to want some kind of survive. Man of the Discord is just a fantastic survivable ability. If you're trying to get out and they're just hunting you down, chasing you, and they hit you whenever you're below 30% health, it's going to stun them for one second, giving you enough time to get out. So it's just a fantastic one to go with. Uh, up next are Relics. Uh, for starting, I like Meditation Cloak, and I also really like Teleportation Glyph. Now, Teleport Glyph is great for not only solo, but for uh, jungle. That way, if a teammate is in need of help, you can just jump over there. It's not. It's going to take no time at all. Uh, Meditation Cloak, I just use whenever I'm jungling for the mana gain. That way, I can stay in the jungle longer and uh, you know get more money. That way, I make it more worth my while to go back to base. 
uh, relics to go into. Purification beads are an obvious no-brainer. You know, get out of grabs. Get you know, get out of hard card uh, crowd control effects. It's uh, it's fantastic. Um, other ones that I would suggest: uh, Shield of Thorns. If you're going against a bunch of mages, just to throw their damage right back in their face. And Horrific Emblem is really nice for those pesky gods that try to get away, like Cupid is a good example. He's really annoying, he just gets away all the time from me. So, if you can slow him down and nuke him down, it's just fantastic. So, of course, uh, other options to go into, you can, of course, get Elixir of Defense if you're having, you know, some trouble surviving. Uh, it's going to bump up your physical protection by 50 decrease damage taken from structures by 25 percent and all for six minutes uh it's it's a pretty good one i've used it a few times it's um if you have mantle of discord it's really uh it's kind of overkill because you have so much self-healing that i find that it's not typically necessary now, uh, Elixir of Power is really nice. Uh, this consumable increases your magical and physical power by 25% and increases damage done to structures by 25% for 6 minutes. Now, that's just if you're trying to uh, just delete people, really. I mean, at this point, you're going to be dealing damage that is just not healthy for any one character to have. And you're going to be healing for so much because of Soul Leader and his passive ability, uh, especially his ultimate. So now to go into his ability set, I like to go for, of course, one, two, three. And then I like to max out his one immediately, of course, getting his uh, ultimate. Uh, I think this was a mistype. I didn't mean to put two there, but... After you get your 1 maxed out, then I max out my 2, then my 3, and of course Celeste is the ultimate. Now, for rotation, you're going to go 2 and then 3 if you're diving in on somebody. Because your 3 will teleport you to a minion. Uh, then I like to bump my ultimate, and then use my 1 to slow them down. And because your ultimate gives you... Uh, increased movement speed and they're slowed, they're not going to be able to get away. At least long enough for you to knock them on down. Uh, set's passive is each time set damages an enemy, set gains stack relentless. If Horus is the enemy being a damage, set gains two stacks. Each stack increases set attack speed, relentless stacks to a max count of 10 for 6 seconds. Now this is where set becomes powerful. While Kingslayer is active, his ultimate... Relentless has no maximum stat count. That means for 12 seconds, because I believe that's how long the duration is. Uh, yeah, 12 seconds. You are going to just be attacking faster and faster and faster. And while you're doing that, every, I believe, fourth hit, yeah, at four marks, the target erupts. Enemies take a burst of damage in each explosion while Set becomes empowered, restoring health. So, you're going to be attacking much faster. You're going to be critting 50% of the time. Uh, Hydra's Lament's going to be proccing. So, you're going to be dealing 170% damage. And that's a lot. Uh, you're going to be healing for not just 25% of your physical power, plus you know, 85 at level 20, but you're also going to be healing for 20% of the damage you deal with your abilities because of Soul Eater. So you really become quite a tank, honestly, and you can nuke down multiple people with little to no issue. Uh, I've had it to where I've killed four people and traded with the fourth guy. I'm sure with a more experienced car uh, you know, person playing him, you can probably solo other teams entirely by yourself it is just ridiculous now set does have some uh some counters of course uh if anybody's building for uh anti-heal that really counters set because he relies so heavily on it you can see his health is really not that great at 1935 and that's at level 20 so if they build anti-heal set's gonna have a bad time 
Uh, also, anytime you get held still, you're going to have a bad time because Set has no health. If he is not constantly attacking, getting his health back, you are going to die fast. That's where Prayer Beads comes in handy. But if you're soloing a group of two or three, chances are more than one of them is going to have a grab. So you're going to Prayer Beads and then you're going to get grabbed after that. So really, those are some hard counters. So uh, if you... And in the clip, I get held down and I get fucked in the ass, basically. So those are some of his cons, but really... He is quite a force to be reckoned with. So this is my build. Uh, I'm going to put up some gameplay footage now. If you would like to stick around and watch that, feel free. Uh, I believe I went, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, almost 20 and 2. So it's it's definitely powerful, and I've only been playing this game for about a week so there could be improvements to this build. Feel free to play around and test. This is just after a week and a half of testing set. Uh, this is the best thing I've come up with, and it absolutely nukes people down. So if you enjoyed, like and subscribe. If you haven't, then don't. Uh, have a nice day. Okay, uh, this is going to be uh, the example of the build you saw prior. Uh, the actual, uh, audio got messed up, uh, I ended up having the game volume way high and you can barely hear my voice, so, uh, I'm not gonna do a complete voiceover for the gameplay, but, uh, I will do you the favor of speeding it up about, I don't know, one and a half to two times speed, just so you can see what the build does and you don't have to, uh, just wait around and watch, but... Uh, it's a pretty good game. I could have done some things better. I uh, made a couple mistakes, but I figured if this is for a beginner, you'll probably make some of these mistakes too. Uh, so uh, enjoy the gameplay footage. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, feel free to check out my Twitch channel. I've been streaming uh, most every day, uh, probably around 1 or 2 to about 5. Uh, and, uh, the Twitch is gonna be Lunch is Legion, so, uh, check me out there if you want to see some more builds in the making. Right now I'm working on an Oler, that's what I'm gonna be doing a little bit later today. Uh, I'm also rounding out a build for Abwash and Osiris I've been having some trouble with, so we'll figure him out. Uh... And uh, I don't look up guides for these builds, so these are gonna be, I hope, they're not going to be copy and paste. Uh, I have seen a few guides just to, to familiarize myself with the actual character and what they do sometimes. So if uh, if you see a build or if I you know make some mistakes in a build, it's not. Don't judge me. I just suck. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Uh, like and subscribe. Check out my Twitch. I have a Twitter now at Lunch with Legion forward slash twitter or whatever however that handle goes so uh check it out have a good time uh see you later
I'll find 